Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Kathleen Bertrand with Bronze Lens Film Festival, and welcome to Bronze Lens Live. This is, uh, you know, I should count. I don't know how many we've done, but uh, each one is exciting, and we're just always happy to have our friends with us. So I'm going to hang. Hey, Tandy, how are you? Miss Travel the World, thank you for joining us. This is great. This is Tuesday, March 30th. And a year ago at this time, we didn't know what was going on, but we have managed to survive and in many instances thrive. So I just thank everybody for being a part of our world as we uh, move through the times of the pandemic and uh, that we remain creative. Hi, Tandy. Good to see you. William Roebuck, you know it wouldn't be my night without you. <laughs> Hi, Ty Johnson TV and T. Haynes 21E. Thank you for joining us. We're going to hang out for a while and uh, just let our room room uh, fill up a little bit. Tammy Garns is already in the call. Hey, Tammy, we're going to um, just hold before I bring you in. So I'm going to come back to you, though. We just want to get a few more people in the room for you. And uh, just uh, we love you. So just hang in with us. Yeah, Ty, we got some interesting things coming up to discuss, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Monica Anderson, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, let me see, I got a hot new TV pilot I'm submitting for the festival titled South of the Border. Okay, all right. How about that for promo? I like that. <laughs> Deb LC33, thank you for joining us. We appreciate y'all. And uh, yeah, so uh, while we're waiting for a few more folks to uh, come in, let me just say that um, uh, Bronze Lens is virtual again this year. Hi, Christopher Moore. Um, our dates are August 17 through 22nd. And um, we have even more films this year than we had last year. We were thinking that perhaps um, we weren't have you know, our, our filmmakers were, might have, have a crunch or might not be able to produce, but that creative spirit just will not be put down. And I'm so grateful for that and for the, um, people that have submitted to the festival so far, we are still accepting submissions through April 30th. Uh, hey, Julian Rigsby. One of the things that we did was, um, we set our early bird price and we have never raised that price, not even through the regular period. And even when you get into usually the highest cost to a filmmaker is the late period. We have not raised our prices at all uh, this year for submissions because we wanted to just let our filmmakers know we understand and we uh, feel you. And we know what a project it is just to put your film together in these times and so um that was our way of just saying we see you who else is here imagine in style thank you for joining us zop media thank you for joining us um mojaf i'm not sure if i say these things right so <laughs> i'm sure y'all let me know film girl forever hey blissa uh just glad to see you all so listen i'm gonna wait and get a couple more folks uh urban urban kz and director jay hall have joined us thank you so much we appreciate that the kature k-i-k-i-k-a-i-t-u-r-e has joined us thank you we appreciate it yeah yeah <laughs> Y'all can always put in the chat about, you know, if I'm saying something really strange that I'm not supposed to say there. But um, tonight's guest um, is um, a friend of the festival for many years. Not only has she been an attendee at our festival, but she has also come as a presenter um, with her husband, Paul Garns. Paul, the 
uh, producer that uh, has touched so many of the wonderful things that uh, you know about. But I'm not going to talk about Paul. I'm going to let her do that. Um, but I want to just uh, take a moment and go back and find her because she's in this thread here. There she is. So, Miss Tammy Garns, I am uh, coming for you, girl, <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. Everybody, for just a moment. Hi, it's Josh Hunt. Thank you for joining us. There she is. Hello. Hi, nice to actually see you. I know. <laughs> We had to do this, right? Hey, Tammy. Hello. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm just so glad to see you. Thank you uh, and the uh, entire Array team for uh, making time to do this with us as um, an Array partner. We thought it was just so important that um, we platform what Array is doing. It is so monumental and uh, a game changer for sure. And we're going to get into a little bit of that, but I want to talk a little bit about you. How you been, what you doing, what where you live, girl? You know, I don't, I, I live everywhere at this point in life. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anybody. Today I am sitting in sunny California, so that's why it's still okay. light. I'm sure the sun will start to set as we talk. Um, okay. Uh, the Atlanta is always going to be um, second home for us. Uh, um, you know, we started out here. Uh, gosh, no, Paul and I met in Chicago on a film, but then we were, I was already in grad school, finishing up grad school here, um, film school, and then he was moving out here. And so this was home for a long time. This is where we became adults. And this is where we first <laughs> got into the business. We were just kids. And uh, then, of course, we spent the last 10 years maybe 11 even at this point, in Atlanta. Um, so what, I, what brought you to Atlanta? What brought you from that course of travel and, and residency to the A? Oh, gosh. Two things. Tax credit <laughs> for filming, right? So uh, uh, we knew something was on the horizon there uh, based off of the people we were working with at the time. Um, I, Kathleen, I think it was almost 12 years ago now. Like, I'm losing track of time that we came there. And so things were just starting to really get pumping. And, uh, and then of course, Mr. Perry, uh, Paul uh, took a position with him um, to lead his company at the time um, mm -hmm. and all of his physical production and build the first studio. And so mm -hmm. we had small kids. I didn't really like, you know, being away from them for long periods of time, which is what you have to do. You and I have mm -hmm. talked about this on a panel before. Mm -hmm. um, and so my calling at the time was parenthood. And so I decided to be a mom and to just support. And, uh, and it's just crazy to me that I'm back two feet into this business. And I think only Ava DuVernay could make that happen. <laughs> so I'm very proud to be working um, with her, uh, gosh, on a couple of big projects that she has going on at the company. And again, it, it could only be her. We've known Ava for over 20 years. She, we've watched her go from publicist to, I mean, game changer is, is too light of a word at this point because it's not just the films and the TV shows. It's actually mm -hmm. the intention behind all of the work that she's doing over at Array that is so special. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she is one of those persons that Years later, I mean, even now we speak about Ava, but she's one of those people years later that people can say, yeah, but when Ava DuVernay spoke, this happened. Or when Ava DuVernay became an activist about this cause, this happened. And moved the needle. Yeah, everything she touches, yes, moves the needle. Everything she touches um, has some longer lasting effect beyond I just went to the movies and had a great time. Well, you know. you're, uh, and we have talked about this, too, is that it's, it, it's hard to find a lot of people who have intentionality behind the work that they're doing when it comes to the arts and entertainment. You know, mm -hmm. people try to tell us that this is a very selfish business, which it can be, right? Everyone is kind of in it to figure out how to promote self a lot of times, whether mm -hmm. it's promoting your projects or your art or your work. But there is something so selfless about her that she has 
layered into every aspect of Array and all of the people that she's hired there that we all kind of work as, as like this monolith of, of art and social justice kind of moving around together, you know, no matter which department or pillar that you happen to work in. And, and it's a very, very, I, I, I you know, my history is coming in to the traditional studio system when I came out of college, right? This is nothing like they told me it would be. If it were like this 25 years ago, I would, nev would have never left. This is yeah. a very special um, and different type of environment that she's created um, over here in, in the Echo Park area. And it is, uh, it's phenomenal. It's, it's just phenomenal. I'm I love it. Well, you know, for uh, those of you that uh, have joined us that, that don't know, uh, Bronze Lens has a long-term relationship with uh, Ava DuVernay and Array, used to be a firm. Mm -hmm. And um, she came to the very first Bronze Lens Film Festival mm -hmm. back in 2010. Oh, my God. I know, it. right? <laughs> you start saying it. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. I was a child in 2010. I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> um, but Ava came to our very first uh, Bronze Lens Film Festival. Um, and um, she won with I Will Follow. Um, and she was also a woman, uh, women's superstar uh, that year, the emerging superstar. How about that? How about well, that? How about that? You called it. You called it, though. You called it back then. My goodness. Then. My goodness. <laughs> And um, so the relationship that we formed really started that very next year in 2011, when um, a firm was was created to be able to distribute that film and others that would come behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think um, th through the years, why the relationship remains so true and so solid is because both Bronze Lens and uh, we're intentional about the work that we want to do to support and uplift uh, the filmmaking community, particularly and especially people of color. Mm -hmm. um, we're very intentioned, bronze lens. <laughs> <laughs> so we knew who we were going after, but we also went after women um, that first year uh, with the superstar honors that um, you know, has continued because we knew that there were so many phenomenal women like Ava, like uh, Nima. Um, I, you know, I just go down the list of the extraordinary women that we've had as our guests because we felt that that was a segment that needed to be lifted um, before it became a popular thing to do. Yeah. It was necessary to lift women. And so then that brings me to you, Miss Director of Education and Understanding. I love it. I love it. That's my special Did you title. Make that, did you create that title? Tell Ava, me about it. Ava DuVernay created that title. It's my special title because there is only one of me. I think that she said something like that. When, <laughs> when she crowned me her Director of Education and Understanding. And I love it because it... it um, it encompasses all the work that I'm doing here now. So I'm not just, you know, coming back is a thing, Kathleen. The last time we were together was uh, the festival and maybe it was 2019. 2019, that's right. Wow, that's right. COVID time is a whole different thing. Um, uh, and so mm -hmm. we were face to face then me, you and Paul, and uh, I was secretly working on the project that we just launched then, but I really wasn't talking, about, I couldn't talk about it yet. Mm -hmm. But it's so weird to be back in, in the industry in this way. I'm not trying to sell a film. I'm not trying to pitch anybody or anything like that. My sole purpose is, or my dual purpose at the company is to educate people about filmmaking and about um, how you can learn through film. And then secondly, to help people find work through our new product, Array Crew, which launched about a month and a half ago. So... Mm -hmm. You know, it's very focused, which I love. Um, and it's all about uplifting people on both sides, whether it's the education or the technology, um, which I'm really finding exciting. That's awesome. That's awesome. We, we, we have such a, we are so aligned. I know. <laughs> Always have been. You came to one of our sessions one year, Bronze Lens, and you stood up and spoke at the end of a session. And I was like, who is that woman? She needs to be. 
She needs to be on a panel. Oh my because gosh. Your words were wisdom. Everything you said was a gem of wisdom. You know, and that was back then. That was like 2012 or something like that. Right. You when know? I was a teenager, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was back then. And, and and at that time, remember, I wasn't, I definitely was, I was only working in education then. I think I was probably at Atlanta Public Schools and their communications department. I had truly stepped away from entertainment, but mm -hmm. you know, if it's in your spirit you know Definitely. the art is just not something you can walk away from so um spending that time though spending that those eight nine years that i spent focused in the education sector marietta public school city schools atlanta public schools a lot of freelance stuff contract work with different school districts and superintendents and serving at a high level on superintendents cabinets hearing what's really happening happening with kids in the system. You know, I start, I don't know if you know this, but my very first career was as a teacher. No. Right? Didn't. So didn't last long, honey. High school teaching was not for me back then, but um, so I was real quick. But I, I was actually an acting teacher because I, I was a theater major and um, had been working stage plays my whole, te through my teens and into my young adult years. And I always had... Um, um, a love for education in the classroom and trying to see how we could help empower young people to understand that the arts could be a viable career for them. So one of my little secret missions when I was in the school districts were to always like have my ear to the ground about arts advocacy K through 12. And so that time spent there, I'm now pushing into Array. We have um, Array Crew and then we have Array 101. So I'll start with Array 101. Array 101 okay. is is uh, we are releasing um, learning companions, these gorgeous learning companions that are free and are online that people can um, uh, use what, no matter what their ages are. So the first one we came out with was for When They See Us, and then the second was for Selma last year. And they really took off. I mean, you ha we had hundreds of thousands of people go into the site, download the materials, use them in their classrooms um, to learn about everything from equity and justice. But, you know, taking those films and, and saying, now that you've seen the film, what will you do now? And oh. so Ava had, yeah, Ava, those are actually Ava's words. Ava had a vision always for education that she was going to help people use film to, to, to solve some of the social ills out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and when they see us, we have a whole lesson on advocacy. We're not asking you to be an advocate for folks um, in the prison system, we're mm -hmm. saying, what do you want to advocate for? What stirs your spirit? Once you start to drill down into that, I mean, this is for kids who are high school through adulthood, right? This is for everybody. Once you drill down into that, then you can say, oh, okay, what steps do I need to take to make that happen? And we give you tangible steps so that in a two-part lesson, you leave actually having done something to move the needle on that thing that you say that you want to champion. So, you know, these are really active lessons. We've had some great partners on them. And then for Selma, we released that in November um, around the time of the election. And it also, it had a massive um, response with people just, you, you know, with what's happening in Georgia right now, it's actually timely today, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. the lessons in there go into um, what, is it, what does gerrymandering look like? What does redlining mm -hmm. look like? How does that look right now today, right? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and, and, and how um, are your voting rights being impacted right now? What can you do to stop that? And also, like the anatomy of a protest. Everybody was protesting last year. Well, there are lots of different ways to protest. It's not necessarily with placards and marching in the street. There are mm -hmm. other ways. Art can be protest. Mm -hmm. how do, what does that look like? How do you measure an effective protest? It's just all these beautiful things that we put into these free lessons that are online and um, and people can go to um, uh, uh, to array now and see the see the learning guides and then we have one coming up um, later this year for they've got to have us and so that'll be the next one that comes out but these are just like that's one side of it and that's just one part of one pillar of array under the no Ava's nonprofit array alliance then we you go know what? It has been so um, <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> my dream to watch the various um, creations, pillars, as you call them, of array uh, come into being when it started with just 
array slash affirm the distribution portal. Yes, Tulane Little by little. It's like every year or two years, something new, another, another. I love it. I just love it. Never stay in the same place. Never. Keep growing. Yes. yes. Tulane, Tulane is still releasing those films. Tulane Jones, our president, I, I always joke with her. I've known her for quite a while as well. I, I don't think she realizes sometimes like the impact that she's having on the film community. Those films that are so special, those indie films made by people of color, starring people of color and women of all kinds, they are having a direct impact. I mean, not even just the films themselves, but the distribution model that Array uses to put it out. Absolutely. Who does that? Who else? That's, that's how it's like started. That. Yeah, Doing that exactly. Yeah. Every month you look up and there's a new title out from Array, from who from Array, honey. <laughs> and they are over there putting out these titles. And so that piece of the company is still is still going strong and she's doing a phenomenal job with it. That's awesome. I got a film for you, Tulane. So just wanted to write them in. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it in. <laughs> All right. So then with the various pillars of Array as we've discussed so far, then where did this idea come from for a Ray crew? I mean, it, it was kind of obvious of the need, but why Ava? And then why not Ava? <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, um, it's, you're, you'd be hard pressed to ever go onto one of her sets. You've seen it with your own eyes where it does not look like your traditional Hollywood set. And it wasn't like, you know, she's out there pointing and saying you and then you and, you know, so that I can meet a quota of some types, type. It is organic to the nature in which she um, brings people into to her company and bring pe brings people onto her projects. And so her sets are known for being equitable and inclusive. Um, uh, Cherish the Day, I, I think you probably saw gender parity was reached on Cherish the Day, like, the fact that that had to be a story is like, whoa, that's, that's a story. But it is a story, right? So she's managed to take her below the line crew and meet that um, that gender parity. Um, then you have uh, her, all of her sets. You will go on them and you will see craftspeople of color, women of all kinds, people of all abilities. And so I believe she was just a little confused when she would go on other sets and it didn't look like the world. And yeah. so just like her films and her television shows reflect the world, so do her crews. And we wanted to bring that experience to anyone who was on set filming anything. So Array Crew was born. Array Crew is just, it's, a, it's so simple. It's a database. It's a database filled with over 5,200 names of below the line crew for our audience okay, members. So for those people that may yes. not understand <laughs> terminology, could you maybe break down what you mean by below the line crew? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in any budget for any uh, film production, there's going to be your above the line and your below the line staff people. Above the line are going to be your producers, directors, uh, actors. Uh, below the line are going to be your craftspeople, hair and makeup, wardrobe, um, electric camera, uh, grip, uh, all the way through post-production. And so, um, and that comes from the origin of the way budgets, I don't even know if budgets still look like this, but the deep dark line that you total out first were above the line and then everybody below it is below the line. Gotcha. That. <laughs> so um, I always like to throw that in. So below the line crew uh, are the heartbeat of what we do at a rate crew. Um, the database, again, is filled with over 5,000 people and we load in productions. So we've loaded in over 230 productions so far that are currently filming all around the country. Um, it's only U.S. based right now, but the idea that she had was, let's start maybe with a spreadsheet or something really fancy that, that we could put in a nice package that could be shown to people. And then she realized, we've got to make this something that everyone can have access to easily. It has to be something that people can click on with their, you know, at, in their hands, on their phones, on their tablets, on right. their computers. And it has to be easy to use. So she hired um, a beautiful um, team um, that designed, a female-led design team to design the site. And then she brought in 
uh, me. And then we started working with Regina Miller was already there, who's the uh, director of the nonprofit, the executive director of Array Alliance. And Regina put us kind of all together. And the next thing we know, we were bringing on a CTO, a product manager. We were building a tech company. We have built a tech company, a female-led uh, tech company with a black female CTO, a black female product manager. You know, I mean, like, we're rolling. Engineers that went to HBCUs. I mean, this thing is like real and happening. And so um, during our beta phase last year, we loaded in and, and went out and kind of found as many people as we could in, in major city centers. We loaded them in, created these profiles for them so that they could um, be found. So each profile, when you go into Array Crew, each crew member's profile has the basics, their name, where they live, what they do. But it also gives them the opportunity to really brag. Um, they can post videos of their craft. They can post pictures of them at work. Um, they can add all kinds of credits and skills and degrees and everything that tells the story of who they are. Because, as you know, we have to tell our story. That's right. Right. That's A little right. differently than, than right. other people may have to tell their story. And so mm -hmm. as we started to build this, um, Ava uh, shared it with the folks at Warner Brothers. They were like, how can we be down? And then the next thing you know, every single solitary studio and streamer in Hollywood, every major said, we want to be a part of it too. And we don't want to what? just be a it's, It was crazy. So now our partners, you know, she was already building this, but the partners are now um, that have come on board to support it are all of your majors, all your major studios. And so they load in their projects. So right now, those studios have loaded in over 230 projects. People are getting wow. hired right now. There are people who signed up for Array Crew, ArrayCrew.com, last week, the week before, the week before, who are working this week. So mm -hmm. enough with the performative, um, the performative uh, equity and inclusion conversations. This is, this is moving the needle. People are getting hired, people are being seen, people are being showcased. It's kind of like an IMDb meets a LinkedIn. Filled you with know, I was thinking <laughs> IMDb, it certainly was. I was it, thinking IMDb, it, right. It's right. kind of like IMDb meets LinkedIn because you can really watch mm -hmm. your profile, but it's filled with women, people of color, folks of all abilities uh, um, and, and all kinds of people. And so we asked some questions when you first joined. Uh, about who you are and 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 why you believe you're underrepresented in the industry. Uh, we vet every profile. You have to be 18 years old. You have to have one credit already when you enter, when you come to the database. And uh, and we just verify that you are who you say you are and you did what you did said you did on your last project and that it was a below the line um, credit. And that's it. And then you're in. And it can be any kind of product. So commercials, films, television shows, interstitials, uh, promos, web series, features, scripted, unscripted. Um, we don't discriminate. <laughs> so it can be all of those. And I, I checked right before we got on here just to see how many Atlanta folks were in yes. the database right now. 800, 800 uh -huh. crew members, 800 uh -huh. crew members. Mm -hmm. Folks are working. Yes. They're yes. working on Disney projects. They're working on Fox projects. They're working on Viacom, CBS projects. They're working on stuff for Lionsgate and A24. I mean, they are working on major stuff and getting hired and getting found out of the database. So we, we are so proud of this right now. Um, uh, so I have a question, a couple okay. of questions. I'm is, there, is there a cost? <laughs> is there a cost to be in or to stay in? Or how, how does that work? Free. Free. Oh, Keep at, ask another one. Just ask it again in a different way. Free. <laughs> Still free. Oh, you want, to being put, a you, want, you want to put your email in there so people can find? Free. You want to add a picture? Free. Free. Just free. Yeah, you, out here giving away free The free, free, free song. Free song. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm okay. Cool. One of the things I was afraid of, I told the team when we were first starting, I said, you don't know what's going to happen. People are going to be on there talking about, hey, we're giving out free jobs, y'all. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, so we have to be careful when we talk about that it's free. There is no cost to crew members to sign up for a rate no crew. And we will never, members. we will never charge you to, to like upgrade your account or anything like that. It's free, y'all. The purpose is to help people find work. So there are lots of people 
um, who were doing this work before us. We're, we're not the first list to exist, right? There's some wonderful people out there who've been doing some really heavy lifting over the last few years to, mm -hmm. to, get their, to grow their list. But what we did find was a lot of times it was a list for, of women. It was a list of Black women, a list of Latinx uh, below the line crew members, a list for Atlanta, a list for Portland, a list for Chicago, DC. What we wanted to do with this, um, and Ava's vision was to really take all of those little pieces of paper that have been floating yeah. around Hollywood, all yeah. of those sticky notes and those Excel sheets that are all like kind of tattered and, you know, and we put it yeah. into something that's beautiful, that's mm -hmm. easy to use and that people can click around on and, and, and build their list. So it's just, it's a pleasure to talk to our, our studio executives, our UPMs, our folks every day who are, and that's the other part. Okay, so this is so cool because I know this is filled with people who work in the film business too. I get so excited. You know how excited I get about this stuff. I do. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so when you go inside of it, people are able to build lists and they're able to share lists with one another. And everybody on the crew gets act that is a hiring manager gets access to use the database. So, so let me start from the, from the last thing I just said. If a UPM comes on and says, oh, I am doing a new Marvel movie in Atlanta, and they're in there, um, and I want to load in my show, great. The next thing we tell them is that now you need to put in your production supervisor, your coordinator, your secretary, your, all your department heads, everybody. Because here's the thing. It's no good if only the folks at the top are using it. Every single person that has the power to hire should yes. be in the database using yeah. it to hire yeah. your transport yeah. captain. They need to be able to hire drivers. We got them, you know, in Atlanta, yeah. black, brown, yeah. female, you know, all kinds, all abilities. So mm -hmm. that's one of the barriers that we had to break down with people is saying, no, 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 no. This is not just for studio executives. This is for everybody. Everybody right. gets the opportunity to hire inclusively, not just a handful of special chosen folks. And the mm -hmm. second thing is when they're in there um, from the studio uh, perspective and they're looking at profiles, it's so easy for them to put lists together. We make it so that they can pull people over, make a list, export it out, share it, and start calling people immediately for availabilities because we wanted to make sure that being equitable wasn't hard. We want this to be something that you say, you don't think, oh, I got to go in there and log into raycrew.com in order to, no, it's easy. And what we found in the last few weeks, this is crazy, because the towns are so hot, you know how hot Atlanta is, mm -hmm. LA is just as hot, everybody's going back post-COVID to film. Yes. What we found is that folks are telling us they're not using this because it's an equity database, it's not because it's filled with lots of kinds of people, they're using it just to hire good people, period. Good. Right, so that's a change right there. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so hopefully, it'll be a go-to place for a lot of um, a lot of folks as as these towns all gear back up and start filming. But um, we're watching people. We're watching people soar, and folks who are who have been working for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, who deserve the opportunity to get bumped up to the next position. Yeah. To um, uh, you know, they've been a costumer for ten shows. Yes. You know, everybody ain't got to be a costumer for 10 shows, just some people, right? Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> so we're changing that. We're saying, no, 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 no. This person is just as good as that person. Give them a call. Interview them. Talk to them. Get to know them. Expand your circle. You know, it depends on who I'm presenting to. Sometimes um, on my demonstration, I'll, I, you know, if it's the right crowd, I'll say expand your territory so they know, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, but what I'm yeah. saying, you know what I'm saying? We're trying yes, to build. We're trying to literally build community and build up people's careers so that they can take care of their families, so that they can know that the arts is a viable career pathway for them, so that they can prove the naysayers wrong, so that they can get back into the field that they had to get out of maybe during COVID. We want people to soar. And I, I, I can't say enough about the vision of, of um, Ava and Array and Array Crew. Oh, I love that. So here's the question then. Um, when you look at the timing of this, not the conception of this idea, but the actual birth of this idea mm -hmm. into a real viable thing, mm -hmm. do you think the uh, social protests of last year 
had anything to do with um, how many companies signed on or maybe they saw this as a way to maybe this is how I get to be in, involved in diversity and inclusion. You know, I don't know. I'm just asking that question. Do you think last year's social protests mm -hmm. and the entire feeling of the country had anything to do with how many companies came to the table? I would be remiss if I didn't think that that had anything to do with how who came to the table. Mm -hmm. But here's where it pivots. Mm -hmm. This is not easy. Mm -hmm. So anyone who signed up to be a part of this, this is not easy work that we're doing over here. You don't just get to sign up and then walk away. You don't just get to put the fist up on the Instagram thing, you know, and then walk away. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is hard physical work. Mm -hmm. So once they came to the table, the next step was actually onboarding all of their shows. So right now I have over 200 shows in here. That's oh, amazing. You know, you're, about, you're getting a call from me this week and it's going to say, hey, I saw you loaded your show in. Have you put all of your department heads in? Have you made sure that everyone who can hire is hiring using the site? It's not, it, and, and, and what does that require? That requires work. Now you got to get, that person has to get on the phone and ask that you, you know, have they done all the work they were supposed to do? It's not just good enough for us, for them, for anyone to sign on to this and say, I mean, that just wouldn't be in the spirit of Array and what Ava has created. This is not about performative social justice or performative d &I. This is about real work that changes real lives for real people who want to be a part of this, of this uh, industry. And everyone deserves to be a part of this industry. So with that said, when you're sitting on the phone with us or on a Zoom with us, I don't think you're walking away thinking you're going to be able to just throw a couple of coins at it and, you know, and, and keep it moving. You may have come to the table thinking that thinking that's all right. they had, right. But then we're going to slip a little, you know, medicine in with that sugar because this is a, this is really about ch changing an industry, changing the way an it. industry looks. I love it. <laughs> and I you have to, it. you know, you can't, you can't, how, how are you going to improve your, staffing on your show if you don't improve the staffing on your show like you have to physically do the work interview the people go through the list make the list call around check avails check references so by the time i see a person from a ray crew and we've seen a lot of them by the time we see them actually on a set we know what it takes to get a person from their bedroom to a set, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that means that that studio partner has actually done the work needed to move that person from wherever they are onto that set. And that's, that's real work times the 5,200 people that are in the database. 5,200 people. So when did you know, okay, what, what day did, did the portal open? What day did you open? Uh, February 18th was our launch day. February 18th. Mm -hmm. So we're um, almost six weeks out. Okay, all right. So when did you know Oh my God, people are really buying. When, when was that moment? We had a little beta launch um, in December when the LA Times first put out their article about um, Ava and Peter Roth's new game changing database that's going to come um, the following year. I'm trying to fight the sun here. You know, I'm in the, let me, let me okay. I don't want to do this IG stuff a lot. Hold on. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is fancy. Um, so, so. Once we did the beta launch, it was it became apparent to us because we had like lots of people si trying to sign up. We we're like, oh my goodness, <laughs> okay. So we talked to our CTO. We we're like, oh, we need to get you know more mechanisms in place to make sure people have a smooth intake process. Again, y'all, this is a whole tech company. Yes, and this shit. I built a tech company. Yes. So all the pieces that go with the launch of a tech company are now coming together. How how we engage with the users what their you, uh, user experience is. I, I got all these new words. Um, you know, uh, how long they stay on the site, how long they engage. And so we kind of followed that during beta. And then by the time we got to our launch on February 18th, we were pretty shored up and ready to go. And so mm -hmm. we launched with just a little over 3,000 people. And now we're at 5,200 less than six weeks later. And we just added on new cities in the last couple of weeks. Um, we had a lot of people from different film commissions come to us and say, why do you not have Raleigh on here? Why do you not have Charlotte on here? Why, you know, where is Orlando? And so we spoke with those, um, those commissions and we started adding on Albuquerque and we added Portland and Seattle and you know, just lots of other places. And so now 
um, when people uh, respond to us, um, there's a wonderful woman named Kelsey who does our customer service. When they reach out and you click the button at the bottom, there's a real sister who is there ready to talk to you about wow. your issues, right? When you click yeah. support and she responds so quickly. And um, if you say, hey, you know, I I'm in Little Rock. Shout out Little Rock, Little Rock. Arkansas. Um, <laughs> I'm in Little Rock and I, I, you know, we're making movies here now and we have a lot of crew members and we really want to get this thing going here. We'll add Little Rock onto the, um, onto the database. It's that simple. Um, and our, our CTO DTUF has done an amazing job of making sure that every single one of our, um, the ability to do things like that quickly, this is built on, a, we own our IP. So this mm -hmm. is not a drag and drop site. Um, no, no offense to that. But Ava mm -hmm. also was intentional about how she built the site. And so she wanted something that she could own um, and that she could add to and take away from at mm -hmm. will. So mm -hmm. that has proven to be so forward thinking because yes. at the snap of a finger, we can change all kinds of things on this site mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to what our users tell us they need or want. Mm -hmm. So um, we just had a so little that, round. That is part of like, what I was thinking because if you've got 5,200 people that can upload unli an unlimited amount of data about themselves, I'm mm -hmm. like, what kind of <laughs> can hold all of that? One built by some women. <laughs> <laughs> One built by women of color. That's the kind. Uh, it's, it's a really um, a beautiful thing. Um, uh, just understanding what it go, what goes into building a data a database is very different from just a regular website. Mm -hmm. When you're holding all of that data and all that all that information, you yes. have responsibility. Yes. So mm -hmm. security has been big for us. We made sure we went with the top security teams, and some of our partners gave us advice on who some of our really really big name partners, whose computers you use all the time, you know those mm -hmm. types of people. Mm -hmm. They gave us advice behind the scenes to say you want to go with this this type of um, uh, security company. When it came to accessibility, we brought on a whole company that just tested the site using people who had different disabilities to make sure that we weren't just checking the box for accessibility of the use of the site, that we were actually going over and above what people expected of us or what the disability community expected of us so that we could say, we, we were intentional about making sure you could use this no matter who you are and no matter what your ability is. And then kind of on the flip side with, with, um, with our folks of all abilities, uh, our disability community specifically, we've also had a couple of round tables to make sure that we're asking the right questions when we do our intake process, that we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're you know, being ethical and fair and, and responsible with how we frame and word certain things. So again, mm -hmm. intentionality, that's one thing I've really learned from Ava is that mm -hmm. it's not good enough just to be, to say you're gonna do this database. Mm -hmm. How are you building it? With whom are you building it? Yes. Um, uh, who's, who's maintaining it? Um, who's making sure it stays secure? Uh, what types of people will people interact with and what does that look like? Are we pouring into other minority owned businesses as we get testers and, and, and customer service representatives and folks and companies that come on and vendors? So um, just intentional, intentional about the way she hired, intentional about the way, we probably have more HBCU grads working on the tech side of this than any other company out there, as far as I'm concerned. The I love that. I love that. Okay, so I have a couple of things that I do um, generally for Bronze Lens Live. Um, I haven't done it this year, so you're my first. Oh my. And uh, <laughs> it's just a little game that I play, but it's really easy. For you, this is going to be a piece of cake. Oh so then, okay. then we're going to take questions very quickly. So I found there are several traits that really um, define um, great filmmakers, great um, leaders in this business, this business called entertainment. Um, there are four that I identify, and each one of them has a number. And so I just want you to hear the different traits and pick a number and it's going to refer to something and I'd just like you to talk about it just a little bit. The traits that I, I identified are perseverance, passion, 
creativity, of course, and collaboration. Mm. So pick a number one to four, and you're going to land on one of those words. Oh, I'm just picking a random number? Or am I picking the one, one in the to order? Four. Okay. One to four. One to four. I did, not, I did, well. not, I did not say it in order. Three. 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 Number three is creativity. Uh. <laughs> creativity. Speak to that in um, the space of what you do, either now or before now. How has creativity shaped your journey? Hmm. Well, um, people ask me a lot, especially with the time I was spending in Atlanta. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you, what do, you do? What do you do? I, I take care of children. What do you do? You know, um, no, they would always say, what do you do? And even in LA, it was always a, what do you do question? And I think the last five years or so, you know, as a creator, as a creative person, I never wanted to box myself into what it was that I did. You know, oh, ages this through this, I was an actress. Ages this through this, I was a photographer. Then I was a filmmaker. Then I was a, an editor. And I, I don't want to box myself in like that. And so I started telling people that I'm a storyteller because that really was the essence of who I was. Um, I have an extreme passion for genealogy. Um, and I've even worked for like that really big genealogy company that starts with an A. Um, mm -hmm. at, I don't tell anybody, I, it was a little moonlighting thing I used to do. And I love it that much. And so I used to wonder, am I not, you know, am I wasting time doing this thing that I like to do because I should be over here. You know, I went to grad school. I got this fancy degree in film from USC. Mm -hmm. Should I be over here doing the film stuff? Because that's what everybody expects me to do. Mm -hmm. And I had to reframe my thinking and remind myself that every step that I take in my journey has to do with telling the stories of others, whether mm -hmm. it was making a feature film, making a video for the school district, or you know, writing a, 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 a press report for them that explained what had happened to someone's child, or it was reading and learning about the ancestors so that I could help someone with their tree or further the learning in my own. I am a storyteller. I tell, and I tell good stories. So, you know, um, or with, me, with my kids, I'm pouring into them and helping them to understand the story of who they are and who they should become. And I mean, that's my life's best work. Um, so to me, being creative has been, uh, or having um, a, a spirit for creativity, a, a urge for creativity in my spirit has just been something that has driven me the entire time. I did question many times though, if I wasn't doing the thing, the writing, the, the, the filming, the thing that looks like art, was I, you know, was I being creative? And the answer is yes. Yes. I was, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. And it takes experience also helps to groom the types of, of creative things that you're going to produce. So mm -hmm. you may think you're working at the bank, right? but you're really writing a, a blockbuster screenplay, <laughs> right? In your head <laughs> as you work, because you're getting experiences. Yes. Every experience layers on top of itself mm -hmm. so that it That's produces it. the best you you can be at the time that you need to be yeah. and step into it. You know what I'm yes. saying? So mm -hmm. I, I have no regrets now. Create. I am creative. I, I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have even said that 15 years ago because I just felt kind of stuck like, I'm a mom, um, I'm a wife forget that part, hey Paul. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm really thinking more like, no, I am a creative. I am. That's, that's, yeah, that's my word. When I retired from um, the, a job I'd had for 32 years, <clears throat> people again, <laughs> what do you do, like, what, you know? And I st some, somebody actually wrote an article about me. Um, I'm a creative because my passion to create was not limited to the hospitality industry and events and things that I did, or it wasn't limited to bronze lens and the things I do. I'm also a singer. I also write. I write songs. See? See? Look at you. And so all of that to me is what a creative does. I think you bring all of that energy from everything you've done in life to mm -hmm. this very, very moment, you know? 
And I embrace you being a creative sister girl. We this bump hey. on that. <laughs> hey. Even at the tech company, even at the tech company, you know, everything. It, it just uh, that's why I think it's so important for young people to understand that that um, an artistic uh, a life in the arts can be for them. You know, if you are an artist, if you feel that you've been called to be an artist, that's something that is viable for you. It's something you can do. It's it's not off the table, no matter where you live. If a girl from Arkansas can do it and be sitting here working with Ava DuVernay in Hollywood with the trees behind, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Come on now, somebody, listen. <laughs> well, you know, Atlanta, Fourth, Fourth Ward, Atlanta, okay. and you know, who knew that this would be, uh, as Killer Mike calls it, the culture capital, or you know, the Black Hollywood, or all yes. those? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. And so, it was waiting for you. I got it. You know it. what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just waiting for you. It was. It was like everything met up at the, right there at the same time. Yeah. You, know, you finished your career. Atlanta started to become that culture capital. We moved there. It's you know every everything happens exactly the way it's supposed to happen. We we've talked about that too. Don't ever do yeah, that. Yeah. Don't don't. You know, you know I'm going to be emailing you. You yeah. still you still have your G, that that Gmail. Uh, that, I do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, you got uh, my fancy so first email and you got my personal email too. You got both of them. Okay. So I know people must have questions for you. I have to get up close so I can see and read this little bit. Right. Um. <laughs> And you may see them before I do, but if anyone has a question or questions for Tammy, oh my goodness, people have been just testifying. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so awesome. This Aww. is so awesome. This is so awesome. All the people. William are... said a whole tech company, honey. Yes, we did. I didn't realize that was about to happen. Um, <laughs> leave it to Ava though, because she will she will push you to to do something you didn't think you could do. I'm afraid to ask you how many pillars of array there are now. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm picturing, picturing something, you know, like the Greek Parthenon or something. With all these, You've got a, if you haven't been to her campus here in town, um, once the world opens back up, you've got to come here and um, and see it. It's just so special, you know. I, I when the first day I walked in, I um I was sitting there waiting for her to come out so we could talk and I'd flown in. I'm sitting in the, in the, in, in the lobby area that has, it's just it's so artistic and gorgeous and there are pictures of it online. And, and I said, I just started crying. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be a hot mess by the time I go in there. But to see just like somebody's vision kind of come, you could feel that it was her, her, you know, you walk into somebody's house and you're like, oh yeah, this is you, you did this, this is you. That's how you feel when you walk into her office space right mm -hmm. and that's not something you're supposed to you know you don't think about that you think glass and walls and white walls but she's changed that um there's a theater there you know um, mercedes cooper is the programming is in charge of mm -hmm. programming vice president of programming at array um uh and uh, as array goes it's into its 10th year i think it's really exciting that ava and mercedes and Tulane have built a theater on the campus a theater, yes. a movie theater, yes. okay? That's the Amanda true. Cinema. The Amanda That's Cinema, true. right? Yes. It's there. It's gorgeous. It's real. Yes. It's big. Yes. And it's yes. sitting in historic Filipino town. So, again, intentional. She could have gone anywhere in L.A. she wanted to to put this office. But she put, pushed, um, picked this neighborhood where she could have a tremendous impact and show mm -hmm. the kids and the folks who live in it that this is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, again, Absolutely. that's intentional. I love oh, there was a question. What qualifies you to be in the database? Yes, I'm not going to try to say your screen name. I would, uh, 18 years old. Um, you have to have one credit as a below the line craftsperson. So we don't really, um, you know, you get to choose what genre you worked in, half hour, one hour, reality, unscripted, uh, um, scripted, uh, commercials, music videos, web series. So there's a lot to choose from. I think we've covered everything. And you just have to be able to prove to us that you actually did what you said you did on that show. That's it. One, one credit, one credit. And sometimes people ask us, why do you have to have a credit? Why do you have to have the credit? Because this is a database filled with people who are, are looking to be hired by studios. And mm -hmm. so 
they need to have at least one credit under their belt so that this is how the studio system works and <laughs> that that's just what needs to happen. It's, it's not, yeah. a, um, there are so many wonderful pipeline programs out there to help people, uh, but this is specifically for people who are currently working in the industry. Okay, okay. How can, my question then would be, how can we continue to um, pump it up, help you? Is there a, a graphic that we can have that, you know, yes. sits on the site or, or something like that, that can let people keep knowing that this is how you get to yes. a red food? Yeah. We have a tremendous uh, team, one of the pillars, marketing, uh, <laughs> at the company. And uh, um, Ijide is our dynamics queen of social media. And um, Jeff Tober just joined us. And between the two of them, we can make sure that you have something um, in your hands that you can start to share around. Uh, yes. For our crew members, we just need them to know that they can go to arraycrew.com. And I think they've been dropped, um, Ijide has been dropping it in the chat uh, okay. and sign up. It's very simple to sign up. Sometimes it takes us a week or so to, to you know, make sure everything's cool with your profile. But mm -hmm. it's so simple. If you have the credit, you're going to get approved. Okay. So I want to commit that we will um, have a permanent space somewhere on our website. Oh, my gosh. That would always, you know, connect to um, Array Crew. Because I tell you, we, we are aligned in uh, purpose and uh, the change that we want to see. Uh, in the industry and in the world. And so we're going to definitely commit to uh, keeping something within our website about uh, Array Crew. And that's why I'm asking if, if you have a meme or a graphic or something, and, and I'll talk offline with your uh, folks to see what I can get that can be a part of our uh, website. Okay. Oh, someone on here, Gladys, said she just got approved and she's in the Array Crew database. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. 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 So there may be others. Um, so any other questions that you may have for Tammy? Because we are approaching our uh, nine o'clock hour. You know, we get shut and get shut down at nine o'clock. So, <laughs> <laughs> and plus, it's Queen Sugar Tuesday, honey. So we got to go see what's okay. happening over here with Ralph, Ralph Angel in Hollywood and them, okay? Um, okay. So we, we, we want to definitely time. honor that and honor the time that everyone has. Um, let me see if there's any other questions here. Uh, congratulations, Gladys. Yes. Oh, Gladys was a filmmaker at Bronze Lens uh, two, three years ago. Is that the same, Gladys? Oh, yes. Yeah. She's one of our filmmakers. <laughs> uh, yes. thank, I'm just going back and looking at all the wonderful works. Thanks, you guys. Um, uh, even even the PG joined in. He never joins in uh, uh, lives. Look at you. You got Paul to join in. What Paul's in world? the yeah. Paul. <laughs> He's in there, too. So, Thank um, you so much, Paul. We appreciate all that you've done uh, for us for all the years of input to Bronze Lens, now that I can you know, say that to you. And um, we just appreciate the work that you are continuing to do. Congratulations on everything. And you know, we love you. Come back anytime. And the same with you, Tammy. Um, open invitation, particularly Madame Director of Education. I'm just like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Good old fancy title. But even without the title, the work is still the same. Just trying to be out here in these... Uh, in these entertainment streets, actually, yeah. like, doing things that change people's hearts, minds, and hopefully has a real impact on their lives. That's all we're trying yeah. to do. Yes, it, and, and the way that you give, the way that you and, and Paul both have given to us is uh, just a true testament to that, because you try to make it work whenever, I mean, you just always... <laughs> We you try do. to make it work, I, and I love that about you. So thank you so much. Thank you oh, so much. And keep up the good. You you keep up the good work too. You are faithful to the to the film festival movement. People have no idea. That's a whole y'all. That's a whole world. If you're on here and you're interested in trying to figure out how to get into film, if you want a quick indoctrination into the world behind the scenes of films and filmmaking, work at a film festival. Go sign up to volunteer over there at Bronze Lens. Like <laughs> film festivals are are um, are like the heartbeat of the whole distribution channel, and so um, it's it's where stars are made. <laughs> and it's hard work. And it, we have an all women led crew. Our crew is all women. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm actually going to post their picture tomorrow as we close out uh, Bronze Lens. You know, just I mean, not close out um, Women's History Month. Yes. Because uh, my team is just amazing. Um, they're they're much younger than me, and uh, they're so sharp. And uh, I just love them. I love the energy that they bring. And, um, you know, and then I love people like you, Ms. Tammy, who is always giving. We just thank you so much for everything that you do. I appreciate, it. I okay? appreciate, so it. I appreciate Open it. invitation. You know you're going to be called on again. Just. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm ready for you. I wasn't nervous with you. I'm usually okay. very nervous when I do these, and I, and I was not nervous with you because I know you are family. You're a Ray awesome. family, but you're also my Atlanta film family. And so thank you for being awesome. so welcoming and inclusive of us as we've tried to migrate between these two centers of, of filmmaking. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank keep you. doing what you do. Um, say hey to um, Ava, Helene. Uh, Mercedes are the people that I know that I know. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone else at Array, um, thank you all for everything that you do. We love you. appreciate the PR team for getting your information out to me. And uh, just have a good evening, everybody. We've got another Bronze Lens Live coming up very soon, so just stay tuned for that. Um, have a great evening. Go watch Queen Sugar. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you soon, Tammy. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Paul. See y'all. <laughs>